Hi and welcome to City Happenings. I'm Mayor David Black. This year's Winter Wonderland will be a mix of the old and new. The Papillion Community Foundation's Executive Director explains. And hear from Sump Library's new director on his view of the future. And Papillion turns 150 years old next year, 2020. We continue telling you about some of the related events. Please enjoy these stories and city happenings for the week of October 28th. Thanks, Mayor Black. The annual Winter Wonderland is on its way. We kick it off at about 5 o'clock with the, we, we kind of call it the Santa Parade because, I don't know, like back in the day you used to watch the Macy's Day Parade on Thanksgiving and the last thing that came up the street was Santa. So we kind of do the same thing. The, the band leads it off and then the carriages fall in behind and the trolleys are in there and it brings up the princesses and other, you know, people, we, we try to raffle off throughout the year a, a chance to ride in that parade. So people who won those raffles and uh, they get to ride there and then it culminates with the fire truck bringing Santa up the street and you know, it's just a nice way to kind of kick off the event. Uh, right, it's right after the streets get closed, so give, we give people a chance to kind of gather on the streets so they can kind of see that. The fire trucks bring Santa to his destination for the evening. He goes into the, the portal schoolhouse so he can meet all the kids and their families and uh, and then pretty much everything kind of happens from there the carriage rides start um, once the carriages get to their spot you know after the parade the carriage starts we have the pack band plays um, the middle school bands will play of course the traditional turning on of the lights happens at 6 p.m. And that's when the mayor flips the switch to turn all the lights on with the two coloring contest winners. The core events remain intact, but a new element last year returns. The Chris Kennel Market will be going on. That usually will kick off about 430. So that kind of happens a little, uh, you know, before, just so people can get set up and, and, and do that. The chili feed starts at 430. So those are the two things that start before the parade. There's also some new additions this year. The carriage route's going to be a little different. Uh, so we'll be putting out some maps that show that route. Uh, but we're also adding like a little winter sock hop down in City Park. So we'll have a DJ that's uh, all Christmas music. And you can go down there and get your pictures taken and um, you know, a couple of new surprises going on down in the park, in City Park, just to help, you know, spread the crowd out a little bit because we have the advantage of having the streets closed. So you can walk around, there's no cars in the area, so it's safe and um, just enjoy the, the festival. Sump Library's director has been in position for four months. There's a lot going on in town and the library is part of it. Opening of Papillion Landing and, and we'll be a part of that facility uh, by offering our digital library services. We'll also have some space within the facility for youth and adults to come in and experience technology in our digital collections. Uh, and so that's a big piece of what we're working on. Despite the excitement about the new facility, Sump will not be forgotten. We also really want to, uh, you know, make the experience for our patrons that come in to Sump to be the best that it can be. Uh, we, we have a focus on customer service, on improving on what we already have improved upon. Uh, we have some plans that will be coming about in terms of being able to uh, check out items easier, uh, make the staff more accessible to patrons. So we are working on some minor changes that I think will make a big impact on, on our frontline staff, on what the public sees when they come in to the library. Matt shared his thoughts going forward. When you look forward 5, 10, 15 years in the future, Papillion is going to look a lot different. I think, um, you know, I've been here for about four and a half years, and even the Papillion that we're in today is, is much different than it was when I moved here. I think there's going to be obviously a lot of growth that we have, and, and I think that's a great thing. It's an opportunity for us to bring new people with new perspectives into our community. Um, very often, one of the first places that people go when they move to a new area is the public library. It's kind of a constant. You know that the community is going to have one. Some library is in the middle of downtown, which Kovar points out is fortunate. I see while we adapt to the growth uh, and we help serve those people that are coming into our community and we expand our services through uh, being able to offer service at places like Papillion Landing, we will still focus on providing that same level of service to our patrons that makes them feel like when they come in, we 
care that they're here. We want them to be here. They're welcome in our library and in our community. Papillion's 150th birthday is in 2020. There will be events celebrating the city turning 150. One is the Tasha Wall Foundation's Butterfly Effect Project. In every social butterfly that she does, she'll donate up to $1,000 back to the charity of that community's choice. So, um, so it, I mean, it's pretty widespread what she's doing and what she's donating and giving back. There will be several wings murals around the city. The idea is to have your picture taken in front of the wings and then put it on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Nicole met Tasha Wall at a conference at the CHI Health Center in Omaha. My mom told me that I would always see her in purple butterflies. And that particular day at that conference, Tasha, her husband was performing at the conference. He's, a, um, he's an artist that creates these pictures with a leadership message. And she had done a butterfly drop at the conference that day. Outside the arena is a mime statue. In the hands of the mime was a purple butterfly. Mm. And so they actually did a kind of a scavenger hunt on Twitter, and I was the first one out of 3,000 people to go find that butterfly just months after losing my mom. Through that instance, Nicole and Tasha Wall made a connection. So that story really touched Tasha in a very unique way, and she actually used my mom's story um, for the following year, which would have been 2016 in the Relay for Life campaign. She partnered with the American Cancer Society to do all these butterfly drops in my mom's name. That whole happenstance led to the butterfly effect coming to Papillion. We were looking for an opportunity to bring it to Papillion and met with Laura with the Community Foundation and she said absolutely let's bring this in through the, the Papillion 150th anniversary. We want to thank everyone who made our annual fall cleanup a success again. Staff and our partners makes this event a top service for our community. We also thank all of those who took advantage of the cleanup. There are lots of ways to stay up to date with what's happening in Papillion. You can find us on Facebook, follow the City of Papillion on Twitter and Instagram, or watch our YouTube channel. Information about all of our departments and programs is available on our website. For more about Papillion, go to www.papillion.org, or just call the Mayor's Hotline at 402-827-1111. Thanks for watching.